When 25-year-old Olivier Roustang took over the reins as creative director of Balmain in 2011, the house was in jeopardy following the sudden departure of Christophe Descarnins. At first, Roustang followed in the shoes of his predecessor, but over time, he injected Balmain with his own brand of in-your-face sexiness connected to the street, attracting interest from a host of celebrities, including Kim Kardashian and Rihanna. He featured them on his Instagram feed and even in his ad campaigns. Today, Balmain is on a roll with more than 30 million euros in revenue and growing more than 20% in 2014. Roosting has racked up more than a million followers on Instagram and the brand is executing a global retail rollout overseen by CEO Emmanuel Demos. In an exclusive interview at the new Balmain store in London, the business of fashion goes inside Balmain's digital revolution. Thank you, Olivier Emmanuel, for sitting down with me today. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you in your new store in London. Uh, and it gives us a chance to sit down and talk a little bit about the time um, since you arrived at Balmain, which is actually not, not that long ago. It's back in 2011. Yeah. And Olivia, I, I wonder, you know, you were 24 years old when yeah. you took over. Um, take us back to that time and kind of what was going through your head. You know, you were quite a young designer at that stage working behind the scenes. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're thrust into this new role. I think, you know, I didn't realize what happened to me when, when I got this, uh, this job. Like, I worked since then I'm 18 in fashion, you know, so I always worked really, really hard and I never asked question about my future. I was just living the present. So obviously when I got this, this amazing opportunity, I didn't really hesitate. I was like really, really happy. Surprised, obviously, but no doubt I wanted to, to get it. Like, I was really, really proud and as you say, like, I was working as a right hand of Christophe, so I, I already knew the house, knew all the team, so it was, I think, just something really natural for me. Okay, and in that first season when you took over, that first collection that you did, yeah. you know, what, did your, what was your plan at that stage? Did you have really an idea of what you might end up doing at Balmain, or, or, that, or what, at that stage, was your goal really to figure out a way of continuing what um, Christophe de Carnin had done? For sure, I didn't want to continue what Christophe did because Christophe is one person, I'm another one. Um, but you know, I didn't ask myself what's going to be the future. I didn't know what I really wanted to. I just wanted to make sure that the business going well, uh, obviously please my president, the house, the administration, making sure that my buyers keep uh, buying it. Mm -hmm. But to tell you the truth, um, the first season, until that I was not in the ca on the catwalk, you know, at the first show, I didn't know what was being a creative director. You know, you're just a fashion designer and doing, trying to do beautiful clothes. Mm -hmm. You don't really know what being creative director, what you're gonna face. You know, like it's just another story, another part of my life. Mm -hmm. But till my first show, I didn't know what's gonna, how my life's gonna change. Like mm -hmm. it's been a really big surprise, and and still today I'm still surprised about everything. Let's go back for a moment to when, when you first started. And, you know, from my, at least from my perception, you, at first you continued a little bit of what Christophe was doing. But eventually, uh, you know, I was, and I'm thinking about the kind of really, really sharp shoulders on the yeah. blazer and the kind of embellished clothes and the distressed jeans. But eventually you started moving things along. Um, how would you describe the DNA or the kind of aesthetic that you go after today and how that's changed in the, in, this, in the three or four years since you've been creative director? You know, I think my aesthetic for Bauman today and obviously what I wanted to do from day one, it was like keeping the DNA of the house, but the DNA of the house born really before Christophe, you know, right. that was Pierre Bauman, uh, which obviously like build this amazing brand and always believe in a really strong woman. He built like the, this beautiful silhouette called Jolie Madame, which I think was really, really important, you know, after the war, like um, there were also like high-waisted, uh, really strong belt. Uh, he was working a lot on the tailoring. The tailoring jacket were really, really important. And also the couture aspect, like the embroidery and the craftsmanship. 
Um, I think that's an aesthetic that I always loved. Oscar de la Renta did also an um, amazing haute couture show for Pierre Barman. So this is, I think, a, brand, a DNA that uh, belongs to the brand since day one, like, let's be honest. The difference between me and Christophe, he was more into streetwear, where I'm more into glamour, I'm more into, um, in a way, like, really, like, I'm more into tailor that jeans. Tailoring. You know? Tailoring. For me, it's like the most important thing. And also keeping the couture part, like the glamour part that Pierre Barman was known for also. So um, I would say I'm more into my generation also, you know? I think he was more into Kate Moss, I'm more into Rihanna. He's more into rock and roll, I'm more into hip hop and pop. Right. You know, it's just like different generation, different age, you know? Mm -hmm. And so obviously when I took the brand, I wanted to keep my customers. That was like, I think in a way, like the smarter thing to do because you can't break, you know, there is no point when you have the chance to actually have this opportunity, you just want to make sure that the business is going well. So I just mm, did this step by step without scaring any, anybody. You're talking about your customer. I, I'm curious who you think your customer is. Because, you know, not every, you know, Rihanna and others, well, obviously, you know, people who very happily wear your clothes. But, you know, give us a picture of who this woman is. I'm very interested in this transition from, like, the jolie madame mm -hmm. to Christophe's stage yeah. of, of, of the brand now to your stage, which you've described as young and connected the, to the street and connected yeah. to hip hop. Who is this woman that's wearing Balmain today? I think the woman, there is not one picture I can give you. There are so many. It's like, um, and it's really interesting, obviously, when you come, for example, today in London for the opening of the store, you meet your customer. They are different ages. They can be like 50, they can be 25. They come from Middle East, they can come from Italy, they can come from UK, they can have like a really aristocratic family. Uh, but they can be also like just being strong business women that you know like build their own world and their own money. It's just so different. Uh, they have not. There is not. Um, they all have a different origins, different ages. Um, but they what can, do they have in common? What do I mean? All power. These? Power. The Bauman woman is powerful. She's confident. She's okay. sexy. But sexy doesn't mean a bodycon sexy dress. For me, sexy and for my customers, they can be completely covered up. They have this confidence and this attitude that they really want to wear Balmain because they know that they are power women. And that's what I love. And that's, I think, what is my goal today. Okay. What's been really interesting for me to watch um, since you took over has been um, obviously the, the landscape of fashion in the background. We've seen the rise of digital media and social yeah. media and technology, not just in fashion, but basically everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, while some brands have been you know, reluctant or slow to em kind of embrace some of these channels, you personally, yeah. and by extension, Balmain as a brand, have been quite, you know, bold and, and um, open to trying new ways of engaging with this audience or this customer that you're talking about, this strong, powerful woman. You know, tell me about how that all started. When, when did you start looking at Instagram and say, wow, this could really be something that, that we could use as, as, as part of the business? Um, you know what, I think when I, when, I, when I heard about Instagram, I was the most excited person because I'm not 45, you know, and I'm born with Facebook and Twitter and obviously now Instagram, uh, Skype, you know, like the, the, fa the fact that I love communicating with people and I love the communication in every way. I love pop culture. Pop for me is like popular population um, and also in my music. So for me, Instagram was a new way of giving to people a piece of your life, a piece of your work. And I think it was really interesting for me to get comments, to get uh, feedback from people that actually, you know, in a way, can't have access to fashion. Uh, when I love pop and when I, I'm really proud of that is because I love the fact that you communicate. And I think Instagram is all about population. It's not only a front row of a fashion show. Mm -hmm. And I, I think today is as important than the front row, like having young people looking at your shows, looking at your fashion, supporting you. Um, it's a new way of communication. It, I think it's way, strong, more strong, it's way stronger than magazines mm -hmm. also. Emmanuel, um, tell me about how, as a business, um, you reacted at first to this idea of Instagram and kind of, you know, op Balmain, as we've discussed, um, has been one of these legendary historic Parisian houses. And, you know, historically, these houses have been very secretive and 
and private. You know, in a way, what Olivier is talking about is the opposite of that. It's, you know, it's opening everything up and saying, well, this is, this is our world and this is what we do. W what did you think at first? Well, at first, to be perfectly honest, uh, uh, I was scared about that. Yeah. Uh, because as you mentioned, Balmain is a Parisian house. And, um, and the way we communicate, traditionally speaking, uh, is to uh, communicate through high fashion, a very selective magazine, in order to maintain the brand very exclusive and unreachable, mm -hmm. and then to create the desire. So the, the fact that Olivier proposed to us to to communicate through social media and especially through Instagram was really a revolution for us. And um, when appointing him, we were expecting an evolution, but not a revolution. Uh, but, you know, after arguing, discussing, exchanging, uh, not being every time uh, on the same page, uh, well, we Th there is one thing that when you're doing business, you have to do. I you have to make attempt. You have to try. If you don't try, you cannot say it was a good or bad decision. So we decide to try. And well, day after day, months after months, we realized that, well, the, the image of Balmain was changing. And that from a, a very Parisian house, we became a very international house, very democratic house, and all that due to Instagram and the communication made by Olivier. And also it, it helps us reach some new customers. You were speaking just before about what is the Balmain woman or the Balmain man. And um, well, it's true that we, we widened the range of people that we were reaching. And today we, we are very happy with this situation, even if we still have to have discussion about what is published on Instagram. But that's the, that's the game. You know what strikes me as well is something that Olivier just mentioned, which is you know, Balmain, relatively speaking, while a very um, important and historic French house is still quite a small business relative to some of the other houses. You know, it's not the same size as Chanel, it's not the same size as Vuitton, it's not the same size as Lanvin even. But in terms of the visibility of the brand, in terms of the presence of the brand, in terms of the kind of global recognition of the brand, you know, the difference now, even back compared to the time when Christophe was there, I think it's a huge difference. And the cost to you as a CEO for that shift in perception has been relatively small. So as, I love a, you. <laughs> as, as a communication tool, as a way of building awareness of Balmain as a business, it's really cost effective. But it's true that this new means of communication uh, is, well, less cost than, than making advertisement in many magazines, even if we have invested more and more every season. Uh, well, we try, w what we try to do with Olivier is to invest on the, on the pieces, on the handcraft, on the collection, in order to, to bring to the customers uh, beautiful pieces every season. But it's true that through communication, it's, well, it's the, the good way for us to, to be very international and to reach so many, many people. Right. I think like when you say there is the price is obviously not so big, the cost is not so big compared to different house. I think it's also, di it's a bit different. I think the cost that Balmain took, also like the risk that taking me at this age and today like following me in a way in this story of social media, it's a big cost. It's not a cost maybe that you can pay, it's a cost of what's gonna happen, you know, yeah. something like it's, it's a risk that so many houses are not taking. Right. Now they are taking, you know, because they saw that some other tried before. So I think the cost was also really big, maybe not as a price, but as what's gonna happen. Yeah. I just don't understand when people speak about Paris, because you are, I mean, obviously me, I still believe I'm working for a Parisian house. Mm -hmm. And you say it's becoming international. I just believe like Paris and international, it's just connected. You can be Parisian and international. There is no two words opposite for sure. me. And I think Parisian big house, as you mentioned, also in the 70s or in the 80s or in the 60s took so many risks. Yeah. Um, they didn't take with social media, but they took in a different way. And I think I'm just really, really French in my way of doing it. I'm just doing this in 2015 and right. not in 75. Sure. The other um, element that's been a big part of the, I'd say the kind of what you know, Emmanuel is calling the revolution at Balmain, the digital revolution maybe, has been your association with other social media stars. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when we talk about Kim Kardashian, yeah. 25 million followers on Instagram, 27. 27 million followers on Instagram, it changes every day. You know, um, Rihanna, 
Kendall Jenner, yeah. Kanye West. I mean, the combined force between these kind of Instagram celebrities who have huge followings, if you, if you added up all of the followings of all of the fashion houses in the world, they probably still wouldn't add up to what Kim Kardashian has. You know, how did those relationships with, you know, I'm assuming you didn't know all of those people at the beginning, but over time you've developed relationships with them and they've become, they're very supportive of you. Yeah. They make an effort to come to every show. They make an effort to wear your clothes to big high profile events. Yeah. How did you forge those relationships at the start? You know, it's all come from natural. I think they felt really respected and not used as uh, I didn't feel used neither. Like it was really something natural. You can see like me partying with Kim or me partying with Ri or going to Kanye's concert, but you don't have any pictures on my Instagram about us having a nice dinner in LA, having, uh, revealing our secrets, you know, like it's, it's just like a real friendship between us. And I think that's why there is the real support between us is because it comes from natural. Um, you know, there is no, you know, if you have so many followers at one point like Kim or Ri, it's because you know how to communicate and translate something. Uh, as you said, so many group houses, even with the best PRs in the world, they don't even get like one, like 10% of what they have as, um, as, uh, as following. So, I mean, they have an idea of the world and they know how to communicate. They have the good rhythm, the good beat with the world mm -hmm. today. And I think that's what I appreciate also about them. They understand how to communicate and, and that's <coughs> something great, but everything that happened between me and them, it's all natural. I met so many other celebrities with who I'm not for going along, you know, but mm -hmm. with them, it's real friendship. And that's why I think there's this real support. There's nothing calculated. Do you think it's also because it's a shared culture that you have in terms of this, you know, you talk about your connection to hip hop and you talk about your connection to street. You know, there's not a lot of uh, con your contemporaries, other fashion designers, some of whom are a generation, a generation or two older than you, who have that same visceral connection with the music. And I mean, I think of Alexander Wang and I say, yeah, he, he really is from that same generation. But do you think maybe it's a bit because you connect with them in a way that other people can't? Yeah, because for me, they're really inspiring me. I'm not using them saying like, I want that you wear this dress. When she's wearing my dress is because I felt of her to create the dress. There's a difference. Some people is using them to actually make the hype, you know, like the, the cool part of the house. But me, I'm not saying like, Go, you're gonna wear my dress because I want you on my dress. Please wear my dress because that was, you were part of my brain when I was creating this. Right. I really create surrounded by, <laughs> by my friends and they're inspiring me. Like, that's the thing. I'm inspired by my generation, my, my people around me. And, and it's a big risk because Four years ago, I was trying to please my front row. And I can tell you that this, like this last years, I tried to please myself. Right. And that's the difference. And pleasing myself means that I'm enjoying my generation, my youth, and why I should be inspired by like 19th century or 20s when actually like I have so many beautiful things around me today. Right. Um, let's look ahead a bit and, and think about the business going forward. Emmanuel, um, you're focusing on a retail rollout. You know, this London store that we're in today is just the latest store in a, in a global plan. You know, where, do you, where do you see the business going in the coming you know, few years? What are your priorities for continuing to grow the business? I, I know a lot of people aren't aware that Balmain as a business almost went bankrupt, you know, back in, I think, 2004. And so really the business that's been built now has been built again from scratch and there's still a lot of potential. What are your, what are your priorities going forward? Well, uh, it's true that uh, uh, the last nine years have been uh, uh, years of uh, rebuilding the brand. And um, during those years, we have focused on building a strong wall cell ready to wear activity, both for women and men. And um, thanks to all the shops that, are, uh, that have believed in the brand and have, have been very supportive, uh, today, well, we have reached a certain level. If we want to go to the next step, definitely we need to have our own network of retail shops. We already have a lot of shops in Asia. Uh, because, well, uh, two years ago it was the, the boom in China and, uh, well, we had to be part of it, definitely. Uh, but um, now it's the time to, to invest all Europe and uh, the US, this kind of market. 
Last question is for you, Olivier. Um, you're also looking forward now. I mean, you know, you've had what I think many would consider to be a very successful initial tenure at Balma, helping to kind of redefine and re-energize the house with social media, with your connection to celebrity, with that kind of a connection to street culture. What, what are you thinking about as you think about the brand going forward? Because you seem like a really driven, ambitious guy. You started working at fashion at the age of 18. So you're relatively experienced now, yeah. you know, that's like 10 years yeah. of experience. What's, what's next for you as you think about Balma? Um, um, I'm going to tell you a story. Mm, my president, our president, uh, passed away like three months ago. Um, and I think his dream was making Balmain international. You know, like really, like being this global and strong, powerful empire. You know, um, my goal with Bauman today is actually like make his dream come true. Um, I think you have. The, I think Bauman has all the pot potential because when I speak about diversity everywhere, like my Bauman army, difference, strong woman, but like diversity, I really means it's, it means a lot to me as a creative director, as a human person, but also as a business person. Mm -hmm. Diversity means also international, and I think that's my goal in the next uh, years, like making sure that the name of the brand will become a name that every continent know, and obviously like having more stores and making sure that Bauman is become bigger and bigger. Well, I congratulate both of you on the opening of your latest store and the building of this global fashion empire that has diversity and digital at its heart. So congratulations, and thanks for taking the time to chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.